Good day, crew, and welcome to the final episode of my rod building adventure. I didn't do anything fancy, no multicolored wraps or anything like that, but I think I've successfully built a fairly solid rod. I'll talk a little bit more about the results at the end of the video, but for now, let's just have a look at it. As you can see, my reel seat is on nice and securely. That's all worked out very nicely. This ends all right too, but now I've got to get this on. And because the um, file I was using wasn't big, was too big to go through this, I had to go and get a new one. Again, it's still not a proper reamer for the job because I couldn't get a proper reamer today. So I just accepted what I could get. At least this one's been leaving a lot more dust than the one I had. The one I had is pretty blunt. It's older than I am. Okay. A new rat tail pole doesn't go amiss. Let's see how we're going there. It's encouraging the amount of dust that's coming out of it. Okay, so I've got a ways to go yet. Proper reamer would make this a lot easier, but it's just not going to happen. Right, this is up the other end now. Let's put it on backwards. See how far it goes down. Yeah, that needs a bit more easing at that end. Put it on backwards again and see how we're travelling up this front side. That would go down now. A little bit tight, but that's okay. Now we're looking this other way then. In the middle, I think. It's the main part we need to get now. I'm going to be careful at this point because I don't want to overdo it and have to put spaces on it. Uh, see, I, I think that that would probably slip down there with some glue on to help ease it. Try and take a little bit more off the middle. Yep, that will go on. And that's all I need there. I've got a, have I got a mark on there still? Hmm, no, I haven't. I need to mark where I need to key up to. And I will key that. This time, I won't forget to key the dog where I'm going to put the real seat. Well, the, oh, sorry, not the real seat, the front grip. Now, so it doesn't need very much, all I want to do is just take the shine off of it so that the uh, epoxy will bond there and that should be enough let's give that a bit of a wipe down with me to get the dust off of it and that dries, that should be fine now, the trick is to mix up enough glue without mixing up too much and I've been a bit hit and miss with that. Don't want any filler in this lot. And I'm thinking three and one and a half would be more than enough for this job. That's about three there. A bit back on straight away so we don't have any accidents. That was a pretty good guess. That's about what I got. One and a half. Yeah, still with that. Again, I should have thought to get something better to put this on with, like a little artist brush or something, but I did not. I think that's got a good coating on it. And again, I do have too much, but not much I could do about that. I don't think I could have mixed any less. I'll just uh, put that there for a minute. Oops, it has it. She's a dripping. Get rid of some of that excess. Ah, oh, where's my handle? There. Oh, here we go. Oh. Again, that was fairly simple. Just wet part of my rag. There. Here's some method of Clean the excess epoxy off of here before it sets on anything. There we are. I'm 
pretty happy with that so far. Let's scratch that normal paint off there now. I hope I don't need my spine mark anymore. I've got it with the real seat, so that should be all I need. Okay, that's it for today. Put this away and wait for that to set, and then I can go again tomorrow. Day four. I've got the rod set up on the turnstile just to hold it because I got the reel on. I want to keep that vertical. The whole object of it is to put this on the end. See that hangs down nice and vertically below. I'm going to spiral wrap these guides just because I want to try it and hopefully it'll work out for me. If not, I'll have a job taking them off and putting in normal guides. But I think it's going to be all right. A lot of people are using them these days. So I'm giving them a go. I've got the, as I said, got the rod all set up on the holders. I'm going to do my best to show you what's going on here. Without a camera operator, it's just going to be me and trying to keep things in position. This gets hot glued onto the rod. To do that, we want a bit of this hot glue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shave off couple of bits. I hope this is in the in the focus area so you can see. You see that little tiny shaving I'm getting there? Okay, just a bit like that. Poke that down in there. That will go pretty much in there so we're going to have some of this squeeze out. That's to be expected and I'm happy for it to squeeze out. I think that's going to get a bit hot so I think I might go and get myself a pair of pliers before I start heating it. Just hang on to it there with the needle nose pliers and let's see if we can heat this. Let that set there. Yeah, it seems to be pretty right. Just eyeballing it straight up and down. That's a good tip with these side pieces coming towards the bottom of the ring. Sort of helps to stop line wrap. Let's try now. Yeah, that's set in place now. So, so far, so good. I'll take the reel off now so that it's got that weight off of it. And then I better see about where I want the rest of the guides on it. I've got the guides set out there. Don't know if you're going to be able to see them in the video, but they're spiral wrapped. This one on the tip, of course, is straight up and down. The next one is almost straight up and down, and then we start to go around in the spiral so by the uh, one two three four guides back from the spiral we're at 90 degrees and then five six seven guides back from the spiral we're back up on top of the rod and this last guide before the reel goes just slightly the other way so that the side of the guide is in the center of the rod roughly just roughly and that's supposed to help guide the line onto the reel. So I've never ever fished a spiral guide rod, much less made one, but I've looked at the videos and this seems to be how it's all done. So that's what I've done, I've got everything lined up there. Of course they're not on securely enough to uh, static loaded or anything. I'm just going to trust the luck that it's going to be alright and go with that. Let's take that down there to start with. And this isn't the way to do it, but this is why I'm going to do it. Uh, yeah, coming out about that far past, I think. I can see why people would want a power wrapper doing this. If you're doing it for a living, it's hard on the hands. Oh, that is hard on the hands. Very hard. Cramping. That's the leap end of it. Now I'm going to put that in through there. 
before we get too far down, I'll just pull him around where I want him. Jeez, that was... Hmm, I did not realise that. Keep tension on it when you cut it. Lesson learned. There we go. Now, I've got to cut that. I think I want a razor blade or a family knife blade for that job. Got a knife blade to do this with. They're sort of packed very oily when they come out of the packet, so I'll just wipe it. So I don't get any oil on the, on the job. There we go. That was as close as you can get, I think. Yeah, I can't see anything sticking out there, so... Well, that took 20 minutes, and it's my first one, so hopefully the rest are not going to take so long. But, yes, we'll see, I guess. Oh, I've also got to cut this other end off. forgot about him. Where does he disappear? Ah, oh, get my blade back again. He disappears in there. There we go, he's gone. Unwrap this. And then I guess we start and do this other side and I think that might do me for today then. It's getting late and I do have other things that I have to do. I've only got about an hour a day I can spend on this job so I'll say that wrapping these guides is going to take several days. I won't bother videoing at all of course. If you've seen one you've seen them all. I might get quicker as I go too. Okay, once you've got the tape around, it seems to be okay to take uh, this thing off. And I just move it up somewhere out of the way, uh, probably that way actually. Get it up out of the road a bit. Uh, then my next step has been put a bit of tape around the thread up on the other side. Sort of spiral it down over the guide. Make sure it stays straight. Come back a bit behind the guide and then straighten it up and start wrapping back towards the guide. You can use your burnishing tool just to knock them up together every now and then if they're getting a bit loose. They go on pretty right all the time but sometimes you just need to adjust them. It does get a lot quicker after you've done a few. As I said earlier, it took 21 minutes to do the first wrap. These others are going a lot quicker now. More confidence, I guess. It's a secret. And just coming up on the guide now, you can also push them back with your fingernail rather than picking up the burnishing tool all the time. But I just wanted to show you coming up on this guide. That one slipped down under it. The next one will go up over it for sure. Oh, no, that didn't either. Of all the guides that I've done, I picked the one that's giving me trouble to put on video. And this is, this is the last guide to do on the rod, so I thought I'd show it on this one. <laughs> Practice on all the rest. Ah, oh, there we go. We're on the foot of the guide now. And see it's going up that guide. And that's it. Just keep going like that then. Now we're nearly up to the end, I've got maybe six more turns to go. I'll slip this pull through up under there, where that last wrap will hold it in place. As I mentioned earlier, when you cut this off, make sure you keep the tension on it and cut on the other side of your fingers so it doesn't unravel on you. Separate that out, poke this bit through. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Gently pull that back, pull it through, and that ties it off quite neatly. You can't even see the end of it. Once I trim that off now, be very careful not to cut the underlying bits. And that's it, that completes the wrap. We'll just give it a good burnish up now. Put the tape off the other end of it, and find where that goes through. Give him a cut as well. Okay, that's it. That wrap's finished. 
And this is the last one to complete the wrapping of the rod and then tomorrow I'll uh, do the uh, epoxy over them and finish them off. And then that's it, the rod's finished. Okay, I've got the rod set up in the turner there. Got the hook keeper on there and all the guides are wrapped. Now, I didn't do the double wrap with the underlay. Being a first rod I just thought I'd do it simply. No uh, trim rings, no double wrap on it. Just see how it goes. If I do another one I'll try and make it a bit fancy. Mix up some epoxy to put on the wraps. Don't need any filler in it. And again we have the question of how much to mix. And the answer is I don't know. So I am going to go with three mils of this and one and a half of the hardener. Very gently putting that in so we don't create any more air bubbles in it. If we haven't got much in it, I'm keeping it tipped up so it doesn't spread out all over the bottom. One and a half mils of this one. Gently stir so we don't put any air bubbles in it. That's the theory. They say to stir for five minutes. I think it's impossible to stir and not put some air bubbles into it. I don't know how careful you are. There are tiny, tiny, tiny little air bubbles fitting into it. I am stirring fairly gently. Maybe it's the motion I'm using is dragging some air into it. Right, well, that's going to be enough mixing, I think. Turn the turner on. Here we go. Okay, I probably could have got away with half as much glue, but I didn't know half as much epoxy stuff. I didn't know, so I had to try and have a guess. Yes, yeah, so I got a good half of it left over, but I didn't know. So, if you don't know, you just got to try. I've lit my smokeless burner. A little bit of heat on these, not too much. Made the epoxy all runny. Just leave them turn like that until that epoxy sets and put another coat on it tomorrow. And then it is done, ready to mount the reel on, set the drag and go catch a fish. That's got the final coat on the rod spinning away there. I've put the flames on it to get the bubbles out of the epoxy. That just liquefies it a bit more and helps get the bubbles out of it. I put some writing on it so I knew what it was. So I messed up the I messed up the wee fish. I just wanted to record the size of the rod and the braid that I intend to use on it. I'll just say that my calligraphy is usually very good. I had trouble this time because I'd already put the resin on the rod, so I didn't want to take it down off the stands to do the writing on it. It would have been a lot better had I taken it off the stand, laid it on the table where I could rest my hand. Anyway, that's the way it was. Did the best I could under the circumstances. A bit disappointed in the result, but again, next time will be better. I could have done better. I could have done an underwrap. I could have done some fancy inlays on it. But for a first rod, I just thought to keep it simple. I think it's okay. You might be able to get an idea of the uh, spiral wrap just looking at it in here. Anyway, let's let that dry. And that brings us to the end of this video. I'm pretty happy with the result. I haven't tried it yet. We'll see how that goes once I get it in the water. But I'm fairly happy with the result for a first attempt. If I do another rod, I'll certainly put some fancy stuff on it, some underwrap, overwrap, colour bands, etc. Just because I'd like to try that. If I do another rod, it'll probably be another overhead rod, or something for trolling heavy rigs. We'll see what happens. Until when, good fishing.